good day everyone. Welcome back. Today we are going to be looking at, you know in the last two classes we looked at uh, what the things you have to be on the lookout for whenever you're writing your essay. And we were able to look at formal and informal letter. We also looked at art and meditative essay and narrative essay. And don't forget all what I've taught you about these things. You need to remember them. If you can't remember for now, go back to those videos and check what we talked. And I, I know very well if you speak to those, definitely you are going to end up with the wonderful group. So today we are going to look at what you should look out for whenever you want to answer your comprehension passage. You know, comprehension passage is like the simplest. This time around, it's different from your pieces, it's different from your government whereby you would have uh, read before coming into the examination. But comprehension passage is more or less like you are given something, you are given a passage, and the answer is in the passage. All you have to do is just bring out the answer. So, and that means what your comprehension passage actually needs from you is your ability to comprehend, that is to understand fully that passage. So let's look at what are the penalties. The penalties that you should try to avoid things you should try to avoid so that nobody will penalize you for this thing. Number one, your grammatical expression. Try as much as possible to avoid to avoid error. Grammatical error. Blunder. Don't say oh this is comprehension passage. Uh, they don't mark uh, error, they don't mark uh, English. Don't be like that. Just try as much as possible to avoid any grammatical error. Because for every grammatical error is minus average mark. So that means in your pra in a answer, assuming the word there is two marks, you are told to your examiner is told to give you two marks. The moment you have an error, that's minus out. That means you end up with one and a half marks. So try as much as possible to avoid any grammatical or expression error. Then also, be careful. This part I've always told you, I think the last conclusion passage I got, there were some people, there were some of you that I had to, I didn't even bother to reach your answer before I gave you zero. And you never read that I have a thing. And I was still tell you, when you are answering any comprehension passage and you are giving me four or five lines, I don't bother to read it. Because if you actually know the answer, you won't need to give me up to four or five lines before you give me the answer. When you give four, five, and a blank, six slides, some of you give to the other of seven lines, it's just as if you are just trying to bet. Yes, you are bet. Let me use that word. You are betting. Saying, okay, at least I know the answer is A. So the teacher should extract it out. The examiner should extract it out. So rather than tell me to go and do your work for you, I, will, I wouldn't bother to read it. I'll just give you zero. So try as much as possible. Don't write this too long of a letter. So just make sure your answers are sure and they're precise and they're right. So, and whenever you are told, I have your marking scheme, eh? Marking scheme of uh, past, uh, uh, past questions. This one says that this one is 2018, right? Uh, what is This one says where a candidate gives, where a candidate gives two answers to a question. And one of them is wrong, I want to That means if you are still trying to bet, oh, if A does not go, B will go. The moment A is wrong, even if B is right, you have your zero. There is no mark left for you. This actually is very prevalent when it comes to all these, um, you are told to give one word to replace. Yes. Maybe you are told to look for uh, enemies. Replace this one with one that you think fits. And the moment you write four, of course, four is right. But don't forget the moment, even if you decide to give like four answers there, and three of those answers are right. But the moment the fourth answer is wrong, you have your zero there. So try as much as possible. That's why you're always so bad. You should write the one that fits in perfectly. We'll still get to that point. So whenever you are writing, make sure that, okay, the one you are so sure of, is the one you have to answer. Then also, hear words or expressions that are expected to be given. Here, yeah, this is what I'm talking about now. Hear words 
expressions are expected to be given to replace words or expressions in the passage. They must fit in perfectly, otherwise I want zero. This is the oracle speaking this time around. It must fit in perfectly. Some of you will be wondering, ah, I, as human, I wrote it. Should I mark it? I wrote it. Should I have mark it for me? The moment we are given a marking scheme, we don't go, we don't go outside the marking scheme. We mark whatever we have. For example, look at this one. Let me give you the ones I have there. Fit. For fit, we can replace it with dot, ah, treat. Then for A, we have a six times, upper, supporters. For steady, we have stabilized, positioned, braced, ready, balanced, prepared. Look at all these. The moment what you are given is outside it, it is zero. So try as much as possible to make sure that you are given a very similar uh, word that fits in perfectly. Then also, another one is that, okay, for those of you that are fond of not writing in sentences, I think you are lucky, eh? Answers need not be written in sentences unless you are told to. But what shall, you, what shall it profit you if you know the answer? But what you are now writing, just because of your laziness, you are unable to give a complete sentence. And at the end of the day, just because you are writing up a, a sentence, you get out of your mouth. So nothing stops you from writing the full sentence. Don't say, okay, the marking scheme says uh, we, we, we shouldn't. It's not compulsory, we write the full sentence. Please don't do that. Make sure your sentences, they are full. Don't give up a sentence. Write the full one. Then another one is that an answer taken as a whole must make sense before any part of it may be accepted for story. That means the answer you are given must add meaning. That's the meaning of make sense must add meaning before any part of it can be accepted for scoring. I've told you, compression passage, this is part that's more or less like very simple. You have your 20 marks there. Uh, please, go home. I, in previous classes, I think uh, Ms. Gadwale has taught you so that not even previous classes, even while you were in school, you've been taught all those types of, all the types of classes. Adverbia, adjectiva, you've been taught plus, you've been taught um, phrases. Please, now that you are home, go back to those notes and study them the more. No, learn to differentiate between your noun clause and a phrase. Learn to differentiate between an adjectival clause and adjectival phrase. Then also the adverbia. You know what time? Adverbia talks about uh, time, adverbia talks about place, it talks about um, region. Condition, that's adverbia for you. So know that part and also know what the answer will be. An adjectiva, if the answer is adjectiva, adjectiva word, it qualifies in them. Don't say adjectiva qualifies it. That's an adverbia. That's the book of an adverbia. Adverbia qualifies this way, so to so write the verb in front. Then also the one word answer I've told you about that part, make sure that it's written. Perfectly. Your figure of speech. Go back and learn your figure of speech. Go back and learn your figure of speech. Ask students. I know this is where you try to show that you are very good. That is when you start talking about thorns, uh, paradox, innuendo. Let me tell you. At least for some time that I've been marking, the ones that are common, that you always come across when it comes to this figure of speech, you talk about metaphor. Metaphor, you talk about personification. Please, whenever you come across any question that tells you that, oh, what is the figure of speech? Make sure that this, as a make sure you are 100% convinced that this thing is not metaphor, it is not personification, it is not simile. Before you start considering porn, innuendo, nomatopoeia, uh, and, and, and so on. So, uh, that is that for. Yes, that's done for comprehension passage. Let's now quickly look at summary. 